are screens bad for you? TV screens, computer screens, phone screens, they're all dominating our lives. Should they? Should you get rid of them? Or how is there a way to do them healthily? We discuss this and more with returning guest Nathan Scher on this episode of The Overthinkers. Hello, thinking people's thinking people. Welcome to The Overthinkers, home for the creative intellectual and praise Elderby. <laughs> I, am your, <laughs> I am your host, Joseph Holmes, filmmaker, film critic, shameless screen junkie, and with me as always is my grotesquely gregarious co-host. Nathan Clarkson, actor, author, filmmaker, and um, a kind of shameful uh, <laughs> uh, user of screen. <laughs> Um, but also a little context into praise Elderby. You yeah, know, yeah. Start. <laughs> I feel like that needs a little explanation. <laughs> podcast and Joseph asked us if we were ready. And um, our third musketeer, Nathan A, uh, said, oh. ready as I'll ever be. And both Joseph and I heard praise Elderby. <laughs> and so now we, <laughs> now we have an overlord Elderby who requires praise. Well, I for one welcome our Elderby overlord. <laughs> <laughs> Like to remind them that as a trusted podcast personality, uh, I can be helpful in rounding up others to toil in their underground sugar caves. <laughs> and, and speaking of which, yes. Yes, speaking of which, once with us once again is our tech wizard, our conscience, and our son- soundtrack to life. But most importantly, a soul whose intentions are good. He is the neurotic, the notorious, the nifty Nathan Share, also known as Nathan A. Nathan, welcome back to the show. <laughs> Be <laughs> very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Uh. <laughs> and that tells you everything you need to know about our show. Those guys are dorks. Yes, but they're my dorks. Um, so anyway, if you do like our show, even after all this, if you continue watching it and you poor you like, soul. <laughs> exactly, and you like it, enjoy yourself. Nathan one. Uh where should people go to show that they like it? Where fashion well, sits. Exactly. Well, you can, if you enjoy the show, one, it would be amazing if you leave us a review. It really does help us so much. Yeah. And please share with a friend. We always want to build our ranks of overthinkers and people who really enjoy talking about this stuff, discussing this stuff. And if you want to connect with more overthinkers who like all these subjects and like deep thinking and culture and faith, uh, please head over to our Facebook group. It's called The Overthinkers. It's a private group on Facebook. And we have tons of memes and articles and quotes and discussions. And we would love to have you. And if you want to learn more about the show, Go to theoverthinkersjournal.com and you can find out more about the show, your hosts, and some live events coming up. Hmm, fantastic. Okay, then. So, everybody ready to get the show started? Let's no, do well, let's do it anyway. <laughs> Great <Cool. Mr>. B. <laughs> exactly, yes. Uh, uh, today, we are talking about screens, whether screens are bad for us and whether we should get rid of them entirely. <clears throat> There's no denying that today the world is more and more defined by screens, whether it's TV screens, computer screens, or phone screens, and now (laughs) David Clarkson's blocking screens. Uh, According to the Forbes article, how much time Americans spend in front of screens will terrify you, which gives an idea of how much Americans spend on screens. Uh, We spend as much as 12 hours a day in front of TVs and computers while at home on average, and are absorbing five times as much information from these screens as we were 50 years ago. Ago. Studies show that this literally is changing the way our brains are wired, particularly for those whose brains have not fully developed, like children. And experts are advising that children under five have all, you know, like under like one hour screens, and people under kids under one should have no screens. This, of course, you know, some of the problems are being raised on screens have lower thinking and language scores than children mm-hmm. who do not. This has caused many people, particularly parents, to consider getting rid of screens for the home entirely and spawned many articles like from The Guardian and from Medium explaining, here is why I cut screens and social media out of my life entirely with amazing results. So, Nathan Share, Nathan A., we'll start with you. Given the harms associated with too much time avo- devoted to screens, do you think that screens should be abandoned? And would that make your job as a podcast tech fan harder or easier if you have to edit the content without using screens? Think hard. This is going to be a tough one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, if they weren't around, 
that would make my job easier because I wouldn't have a job anymore. It'd be like giving Dobby a sock. You I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> so you're in favor of getting rid of screens is what I'm hearing. I'm in favor of having less to do so I can do more stuff I want. Okay. But I also want to do this, so it's fine. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, what was the first question again? Oh, yeah, whether we should like actually do it or not. Eh, I mean, I feel like it's an overcorrection if we do it. Like everything else, just kind of, I always lean towards just having a balance of things. So outright getting rid of something, I feel like it's always kind of, not always, but usually kind of an oversimplification. So I think there is sure. a time and place for screens, but like getting rid of them completely, I feel like you're missing out on the good and good potential there is to be had from using screens and from like technology and the internet in general. Cause it feels like that's what we're really talking about here. It's like how much technology is good for you or how much technology is bad for you. And there's a lot of good human innovation that's come from technology. And we'd be kind of doing ourselves a disservice if we act like, oh, this is all bad. This is all bad for me. I'm going to reject all this. Cause a lot of people put time and efforts like, make these things and make life a bit more convenient for us and make it easier for us to all connect with each other across the world. And yes, there is plenty of bad that's come from it, but there's plenty of good from it too. And we should try to remember that as we try to regulate our screen time versus as opposed to completely cutting it out of our lives. Agreed. It's, it's interesting. I think humans tend towards, and, I, and I've said this a few times, humans aren't good at um, moderation. We, yeah, right. for whatever reason, really tend towards extremes. And so I think, like Nathan said, it's an overcorrection. <clears throat> but I think it's a correction that people are feeling because, again, humans tend towards extremes. And I think with the invention of internet and, and all these different things, like you're saying, Nathan, the conversation is really about, it's not just about screens, but it's about all the things on them and that we're yeah. engaging with. And so I think humans tend towards extremes and we tend towards over utilizing and using things to an unhealthy degree. Yeah. Screens in themselves can be amazing. Like, I mean, we are looking, we're all in different places looking at each other on a screen right now. So this Ooh. screens can yeah. be basically magic. I mean, it's amazing what we can do with them. But my contention is, and this is one that I, I have felt in the, in the growing years is, I'm a writer and uh, a podcaster and things like that. My whole life exists in front of a computer or on my iPhone. Yeah. And I have found myself occasionally growing a little bitter um, mm. with the amount of time I have to, amount of life I have to spend looking at the black mirror, uh, yeah. so to say. And uh, I, yes, exactly. No, uh, so it's already taken. It's just taken it. on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it's, it's tough because I, you know, I get to the end of a week and it will give me my average screen time on my iPhone and it depresses me. It'll give me mm -hmm. my average, yeah. how many hours a day I spent on. And I'm looking at six, seven, eight hours. And you know, a lot of that is work, yeah. but I, I think the thing that depresses me is we live in this beautiful world created by God. Right. We live with people who are in the flesh and you can see their eyes and their, and so I think it depresses me to think of how much time I will have spent in front of a screen by the time I die. Right. Now, screens do amazing things. I'm a filmmaker. I love making movies. I love yeah. talking to friends on Zoom. I love playing chess on my phone. Um, but I think, again, it goes back to that humans are just no good with moderation. We tend towards extremes. So the question for myself really isn't should we get rid of screens completely or should we just totally dive in, but rather how can I live healthfully? Yeah. Um, mm. mentally and emotionally um, with screens. Because during the pandemic, I got to this point, and it, it was mostly reading news, and Joseph, you and I have talked about this, yeah. where I couldn't stop reading news, and it was upsetting me. I was literally yeah. having, it was upsetting my emotions and my mental state, and I had to turn my phone off. Yeah. And I turned my phone off and went and turned video games on, so I guess <laughs> yes. I went from one screen to another. Yeah. But, um, but I do think Nathan hit on the head when this is really a question of not should we have screens or should we not, but it's how yeah. much, how can we find this moderation and what is healthy and what isn't, what amount. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So Joseph, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. I think, I mean, you know, this is another depressing situation where we all are basically in agreement, which makes for horrible uh, TV podcasting. Rip off! We paid for blood. No, um, <laughs> but no, I, the, 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 um, the first thing is, again, 
everybody who has, you know, cut like social media out of their life or, or something like that, who has done it, who's been able to do it, has said, talked about, like glowed about the benefits of it. You know, things like, you know, look, I, I'm, I get more work done. I'm, I'm happy eater. You know, I'm less depressed. You know, I've, I've, I get to enjoy the world, you know, so there's a lot of benefits from, you know, the absence of screens in your mm-hmm. life that can come if you're able to do it. But I mean, there's a, but for most people, there's no justification for getting rid of screens entirely. Mm-hmm. And even like, you know, social media entirely. There's a mm-hmm. um, Chris Bale, who's a sociologist who wrote the a recent book, uh, Breaking the Social Media Prism, um, points out the fact that almost every single person who gives up screens and goes like, comes back to them eventually. Yeah, every single person who goes to social comes back to them eventually. Even the people those success stories, like I have a changed person now that I do not have social media. It's like no, they eventually come back. So there's they always come back. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> so, so that's I think for me a non-starter. It's not a. It's not a a, a the absolute is not a viable alternative. So you're right. Mm-hmm. The. And again, the reason is so because there's so many benefits for it. It really does allow people to connect with each other, you know, across, you know, a a wide array of differences. It allows for me, again, as sort of I'm I'm an introvert who loves people. And social media has actually been one of the best ways for me to be able to regulate my social interaction with people and stagger it. So I have the people that I want to hang out with in person regularly. I have the people I want to hang out with person um, sometimes. And then I have the people who I want to have a basic relationship with and keep up with, but I don't want to, you know, have to spend all the time with. So I have people that I basically- I really hope that everyone listening right now knows where they stand. (laughs) Exactly, yes. (laughs) Believe me, they haven't reached out to me to be friends with me in person either. So we're, we're, we know where we stand with each other. So yeah, it's like, oh yeah, like I, I can interact with this person and still maintain kind of a relationship with them even if it's just minorly on social media. And so it's able to kind of regulate and keep in balance my relationships in that way. And also, again, the stories we're able to share with each other through, you know, through film and television and the, the worlds we're able to, to, to give each other and the empathy and the worship that we're able to, you know, uh, transfer to each other through these things. It's amazing. And uh, things and yeah, the ability to write books, you know, without, you know, quill, you know, without quill pens, like, you know, without, you know, it is, is a, is an amazing thing. Now, mm-hmm. so I think that kind of brings us to the next point. It's like, what does actual positive regulation of screens look like? Because one of the things that, you know, I think is worth pointing out is that the people- Self-regulation, create, by the way, not governmental re- yes, regulation. self-regulation. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, oh, because they always do such a good job when they kind of step <laughs> into things. I'm not touching that one. Um, but the, yes, <clears throat> tech CEOs and tech by people who create, you know, Business Insider did like a story was like how Silicon Valley CEOs limit screen time at home. Like <clears throat> the people who invent the things we're using, the tech we're using, you know, like don't let their kids use like more than an hour or like, you know, a, wow. a day or like, you know, eight, eight hours. Keep like phones away from, you know, their their kids at dinner time. Like make their nanny sign, you know, no phone policy while they're, you know, wow. with their kids. You know, so mm. the people who have built the things we're using are highly regulating them within their home. And so to mm. me, that looks like a model for like, okay, you know, there has to be some kind of regu- you know, self-regulation within the family, within the community for yourself and for your families um, of what that looks like. And it looks like differently for each person. But I think I, I, will, I will say this. I'll ask this. How do you guys is do you make attempts to regulate this in your life? These the screens, the amount of time you spend or the way you spend them. And what does that look like to you? And what do you think? And even if you're not doing it right now, what aspirationally do you would you like it to look like for you um, uh, in in a, in a scenario that you think would be positive? Hmm. I don't think there are any particular habits I have at the moment, but like if there are aspirations, I think the aspiration that I would want is that when I use my screen, I don't use it as a replacement for human connection, like in person yes. uh-huh. human connection, but also even while I'm using it, I use it as a means to maintain connection or like establish connection with people mm. who are not with me in the present mm. so it's like n- don't let it take me out of whatever present moment i am with someone else but like if i am just by myself 
still use it as an opportunity to connect with someone that isn't with me in the present kind of so like yeah. in, no, in, in either case don't like um um I, isolate myself either like physically or mentally or whatever use it as a means to make connections so like even if i'm by myself i don't feel lonely if i'm like texting someone or messaging someone about their day or telling them about right. something i saw or like mm -hmm. asking them about something but like if i'm talking with a group of people i try I, I i'm not great at this but like i think the aspiration would be like try not to look at my phone too much while i'm having mm. a conversation with people yeah well, the conversation is interesting <laughs> Unless the people are super boring then, then yeah i will be hey, on what is, but but nathan you're on the phone all the time when you're hanging out with us yeah i'm what just thing? gonna nonchalantly <laughs> sip this water and not answer that <laughs> no, that's a great question that is uh, excellent yeah Joe. I, and that's a great point, Nathan. Uh, yeah. I, what I kind of hear you saying is that screens are good if they are being used towards a positive end. Right. And I, and I think that, like right now, I will have zero guilt getting off after we do this podcast, getting off Zoom, because we did something. We were yeah. together as building community. We were having a discussion. But then I have to look at the times in my life when I feel like, I don't know if anyone else gets this, but it's almost like this brain deadness after an hour of scrolling through TikTok or sure, Instagram, yeah. whatever it is. And I did that to distract myself from life. Mm -hmm. And so I think if screens can engage you more with reality and sure. life and goodness and connection, then they're amazing. And by the way, this can be in a million different ways. During the pandemic, I played video games with my brother because I couldn't see him. And mm -hmm. so- yeah. Yeah. Down there sharing a moment, having fun, laughing, doing things together. That was a really positive use for me of screens. Yeah. But then there are also times in which I was sitting in my apartment during the during the lockdown, which I was bored and I could have made connection. I could have done something useful. And yeah. instead I just scrolled through things so I could zone out. And I think that's when you start to see them yeah. being used as a quote unquote a drug to yeah. uh, as escapism, as trying to escape something, not engaging with life. So I think. My rule, I guess, is, is this screen time bringing me closer to reality? Is it bringing yeah. me closer to people? Is it helping me engage with goodness more? Or is it taking away from my experience of the world? And right yeah. now, I'm currently, um, I left New York City for a little bit, and I'm back in my hometown in Colorado. And, you know, I don't want to be this guy who's like, uh, oh, I gave up screens and now I'm really in the mountains. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a real guy now. Away from all the sheeple. Yeah. <laughs> That <laughs> sheeple, yeah, and and um, but yeah, it it is interesting. I went on this big. I've been going on hikes and and sitting on the porch and looking at nature, and these were things I missed. And I think yeah. sometimes we have to be careful that we're not missing the beautiful yeah. things of life and using screens as a way to es escape the hard things or the boring things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and in doing so, end up missing the beautiful things. And so mm -hmm. it, it's a tough it's a tough balance to strike because, like you mentioned, Joseph most of us really need screens to live yeah. um, and both in our work and even on our social lives. I don't think a lot of us would have survived without Zoom, but I think the question I'm trying to ask myself more and more is whatever I'm doing on the screen, is it yeah. uh, helping me engage with life and beauty and goodness and people and community, or is it just distracting me from those things? And so that's the question I try to ask myself more and I'm still no good at this, but I try to ask yeah. myself mm -hmm. as I'm mm -hmm. as I'm engaging with technology and screens. Mm -hmm. No, I think that, I think that's excellent. I think. Oh, good. Sorry, you were going to say something, Nathan. I was going to say the only other and the only other thing I could possibly ask that is also being more conscious of like, and this kind of touches on what we were we've been dancing around this anyway, but um, being more conscious of what's actually on the screen and like whether mm -hmm. like again ah, like yes. if what's on the screen is helping you engage life or if it's like helping you or if it's like isolating you from life because you yeah. touched on this earlier joe when talks about when you talk about people who cut out social media from their life it's like okay yeah. they're not really cutting out screens from their life because obviously they're still working on screens yeah. or whatever but they're cutting out things from the things on their screen that would say make them feel lonely or stressed or whatever yeah. because social media has a lot of negative negative aspects of it and so like you're cutting out that from showing off up on your screen but you're not cutting out the screen itself that's an excellent point. There's there is the screens just being from screens, and then there's the content of the screens. Yeah, and I think and, the, and those are two separate things that both need to be taken into account. I think, yeah, I, when I look at sort of like what I I use screens for again, like it's for work, it's for writing, it's for engaging in art, you know, like film and TV. It's you know again to connect with people and to sort of help self regulate and stagger like my connections with people in a way that's so I can maintain more relationships. Um, and um, but it was also and then is also when I'm really stressed and I've been, you know, overworked from a lot of things, allowing myself to turn my brain off and kind of like just engage with something mindlessly. And, you know, I think that 
you know, for me, I haven't really done a lot of figuring out how, cause, cause I don't feel the need to, it hasn't really gotten in the way of in-person relationships with people for the most part. So I haven't Mm -hmm. like had to struggle with that again. Like I still, you know, regularly am trying to engage with real people. So it hasn't really, but where, you know, again, where it has, I have had difficulty is, okay, am I, you know, um, using it, am I using it to turn my brain off and to give myself a sort of a, a in a way that is uh, preventing me from doing other things would be more beneficial. Like, again, mm. could I be reading a book that would actually be, you know, adding something to my life more uh, than just scrolling by through Twitter on a Kindle? Or a phone. Sure. Yes, I- this is true. This is it. <laughs> that's true. But that's again because the content issue. Am I reading? Am I you know scrolling on Instagram yeah. or Twitter or something like that to turn my brain off and to give myself some happy feels because I'm feeling stressed out? Could I? Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's some evidence that like turning your brain off at times can be helpful. Right. But can could I be doing this in a more beneficial way? Could I be reading mm-hmm. a book that would do that instead? Mm-hmm. Or am I creating the habit of needing more and more to get those sort of highs to kind of, you know, uh, oh, compensate for the mm-hmm. uh, stress in my life? And am I actually, is that preventing me from recognizing the fact that I should be having less stress in my life? You know, yeah. am I using that as sort of a, a kind of a substitute for realizing I should fix the problem? That's, you know, something I deal with. And also, again, like you said, social media, like one of the ways I've done regular with social media and we'll do an episode on social media at some point in general, but like I I've always, I've not, I've really not wanted to edit like the people I follow too much because I felt like I wanted to have a diversity of voices that I'm hearing to. But eventually I realized that I just, I was, it was overstressing me out. So I had to like cut people out who were stressing me out on Twitter. And then I really enjoyed Twitter after that. It actually became a benefit to me once I like, okay, these people are asking for trouble whenever I see them. So I'm just going to like, cut that. I did that, you know, with Facebook too. I unfollowed toxic. Yes. So I think, so for me, again, I haven't, I haven't really put an effort to saying, okay, when do I not have, you know, screens around as I have been regulating, what is it that I'm actually watching on my screens? Um, But I think that's sort of the next step for me is figure out is, you know, should I be reading a book right now? I have been looking to, looking to, push myself to read more books. And that's been really helpful. Um, actually, so, but for me, the thing is, it's more about what activity should I be doing in substitute? Should I be working mm-hmm. out? Should I be, you know, going out and exploring nature? Should I be seeing friends? Is there's a, has to be a positive thing that I'm doing instead of the screens that is being the substitute for screens rather than just mm-hmm. an absence of something, not doing screens. So it almost seems like a question you can ask is, are you using screens as a as a drug slash coping mechanism to stimulate your brain without really engaging in life as a means like yeah. check out of, of life? Or are you using screens as, the, as sort of brain food to stimulate your brain in the way that encourages you to engage life and like yeah. check into life as opposed to check out of life? That's great. Well, and there's an interesting thing here about screens. And, you know, you could argue the same thing for books and for yeah. pictures whatever it might be um but screens are a faux reality right any, sure, any sure, sure. gamers yeah. know this any and so with any faux reality with any with any fake it's not a real thing it's not in the yeah. world it's a, a representation of something real and i think it's interesting you know i hate to be this guy bring up the question like when i'm on my deathbed well i have <laughs> yeah. i had looked at you know one more screen or will I wish I'd seen more of the world or whatever it is, or, or yeah. in someone's eye my, you know, or laugh with somebody. And, you know, th- those are kind of funny false dichotomies because we can do both. And, and, right. but again, you know, I'm going to pretty much re- reiterate what we've kind of said a few times, but I, I do want to explore this idea of screens are fake are faux reality. They, sure. they represent a reality that looks like reality, but it's not. So, you know, in a video game, you're in a world, but it's a it's a world that's created by ones and zeros that was right. um, you know designed on a computer. And so when I play video games, I'm writing a book on video games right now, and I argue that playing video games can actually enhance your life because if you yeah. practice in the game, being heroic, living with purpose, all that, that will actually affect your life when you turn the video game off. I can be here like the main character. Um, so I, I do think the screens can really... Yeah. actually have positive benefit in our real world right and so to me it's not just is it good or bad what's on the screen 
it's is the thing on the screen causing me to live a better life after the screen is off or is it causing me to escape life and I, and I mentioned that earlier but it is a faux reality so like when i watch a movie that movie can cause me to go and want to be a better person mm-hmm. right? think about something new same with the game but um I, you have to um you have to gauge what is this thing I'm engaging with? Is it causing me to have a deeper connection with reality yeah. or is it causing me to break connection with reality? And so you, you look at something like pornography, which happens on screens. Yeah. That's a total fantasy that does not encourage you to engage with reality, but it actually breaks your connection with yeah. reality. Same with a lot of the social media kind of stuff. It's, it's actually not engaging with the reality of these yeah. people or their experiences or their lives is causing you to have a faux sense of what it is and actually has a negative sense as soon as you shut off yeah. the screen. And they've done plenty of studies on that yeah. comparison and you know, all that. And so I want to get better at asking myself the question, yeah. whether the things I'm engaging with on a screen are helping me engage with reality or if they're helping me yeah. break reality. Cause I think both are possible. And, and by the way, I don't think it's just screens. I think this is almost mm-hmm. anything, but I think screens screens are especially potent in this area. Well, yeah. I saw the window to the soul after all, and now the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we just got to be careful about the media we consume. Uh, you're bringing in Bible verses. You, you Christian, you. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Would it be better at Ron C.S. Lewis? <laughs> oh, oh, that hurts. Oh, <laughs> that hurts my soul. Um, uh, I think that. Uh, I think that you make an interesting. You make an excellent point. I mean, there's a meme that goes around about you know about. Uh, it shows like a bunch of people in like medieval times, like killing each other. And it says, you know, um, look at it. Nobody looking at screens, everybody just living in real life in the moment. Um, and, 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 and others that show, you know, um, people sitting on trains, every single person reading a newspaper mm. and saying, you know, like, look at it, nobody on their screens, everybody's engaging each other in real life, you know? And so it's not like the modern world has a monopoly on, um, on uh, people finding ways to, to engage in faux reality or representations of reality or mediators of reality. Um, and it's also certainly not true that when people are engaging more in real life, it's a, going to be a more positive thing. But again, we do know that, particularly with children, if you don't actually learn to um, live in a life in a way that's unmediated, you know, it does it, 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 it just like if you don't spend your life and you never like, you know, exercise, you're just, you lose the ability to do that. And so much of life needs to be done in a mediated way. One of the things there was um, uh, an article a while back that was, is it talking about that, how from a millennial who was talking about um, uh, how there's so much, what our generation actually hasn't learned is actually how to have in-person conflict. Mm. Um, because it's like we could again ghosting is the phenomenon of I'm not actually going to like break up with this person and say I'm not going to see them again I'm just going to stop talking to them and because we have a mediated relationship I can do that um, I think you know th- those social skills aren't learned and so I think you know so for people who are for themselves or for I think for themselves or for their kids I think so we, we've talked a lot about the general principles of like okay sure. is it helping us <laughs> Somebody has re- watched I Met Your Mother and I love him for it. I request the highest of fives. Um, the, um, to, the principles of like, okay, um, is it helping you engage more in life or less? You know, yeah. as is it actually wa- helping you want to be a better person or a worse person? You know, is it something that is, you know, life giving or is it life stealing? You know, um, uh, and finding ways that you should, um, what are things that you're using as a substitute for? And can there be screens that you can, you, that uh, non-screen ways for you to do this? He's like, okay, you, you need, like I, I gave the, just the one example of like, okay, could I be reading a book I'll enjoy rather than, you know, uh, scrolling on Twitter, I enjoy, or even, you know, reading a book on Kindle, I enjoy, like, is there something, a way I can do that? Is there a way you can, you know, regulate your social media feeds in those ways? But so now what are maybe if we can say some practical strategies for both, you know, people themselves or for as parents, they could think of like, okay, how could you implement you know, cutting the amount of screen time so people's, you know, kids' brains develop and you you learn the skills and maintain the skills for person-in-person interaction. What are strategies for limiting that um, or limiting that for yourself or for others in your family that you can, that we can think of, strategize? Again, we haven't engaged with the, that 
it so f- big way so far, but I was wondering if people had any ideas. Hmm. Yeah. Nathan, any ideas? <laughs> We're all going to pass the buck here around the group. <laughs> uh, Nathan? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Put your kids in front of the screen 24-7. Just have them yeah. just sit in front of the TV, <laughs> do nothing but watch it. <clears throat> That's what my parents did for me, and I turned out TV. It's like, it's like making, <laughs> when you find your teenager smoking a cigarette, you make him smoke the entire carton so he hates it. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, sit your kid in front of the TV nonstop, and he'll hate it eventually, right? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Logical. <laughs> um, no, I, but I, I think that's a good question. What, what's the practical application of the right. principles we're talking about? Right. And that's always hard because it's, I think it's case to case. I think it's person yeah. to person, but I do think there are some practical, practical things that all of us can practice here. And I, again, I'm probably going to move a little abstract and saying what I've noticed for myself is yeah. the healthy things, um, interestingly enough, are when, what I love about kids yeah, switch gears for a second. Is that when they watch a movie, mm-hmm. like let's say the you know little boy watches yeah. a superhero movie? I bring this up a lot. Um, he's almost can't wait for the movie to end so he can go be a superhero. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So he's That's like you know, halfway through, he doesn't even care about the ending. He's like, oh my goodness, this is so much fun. This is so much fun. Look at that guy. He's beating all the bad guys, and he like races out of the room before the movie's even done to yeah. put on a cape to run outside and to be that superhero, right? To pretend yeah. to be that superhero, and so. I, I don't know how to say exactly practically, but for me, I want to find things in my life. In, in right now, um, when I'm, I don't know, watch a beautiful documentary that that breaks my heart about yeah. something, it makes me want to turn the documentary off and go do something. Yeah. So I think mm-hmm. screens can be a powerful uh, uh, launching pad to actually making you want to turn them off. So yeah. if something powerful enough on the screen, you know, let's say you you brought up how I met your mother. <clears throat> I remember someone talking to me that show a while ago and he said, um, that show made me want community. And I'd never wow. seen a bunch of friends who hung out and were together and it made him want to turn it off. Yeah. And so it Ooh, that's beautiful. Friends and, community. Mm. and so I think that screens can give us great images and, and ideas and thoughts and things that make oh, us oh, want yeah. to turn it off and go yeah. live in the real world. Yeah. And, so, and for me, um, even on, even on Instagram, I follow a bunch of travel bloggers and these yeah. beautiful pictures from around the world that made me want to go and hike in the mountains. And I did right. that yesterday. Some of that was actually inspired by me seeing beautiful sites and pictures right. on social media. So for me, it's, I guess the practical would be limit your social media time. But I think it goes back to what Nathan said, and it's not even, or not social media, your screen time, but make sure that the limited amount of time you are spending on screen, whatever that is, then that could be 10 yeah. hours. I, I'm not yeah. going to tell you and your family how to do it, but whatever time you do spend on whatever limits you do spend on screens or your kids have your kids and have yourself watch, look at yeah. things that mm-hmm. actually make you want to turn it off and go and engage in the world. So whether the word of the day, boys and girls is intentionality. <laughs> but it is. It really yeah. is intention be intentional i think that's the worst part of screens is it we use it to distract ourselves or mindlessly yeah be intentional about the things that you're watching and the and looking at and the things that you're watching looking at should cause you if they're good and they're beautiful i want to make films that yeah. make people want to turn it off and go and love better be better I, I that make people want to stop watching a film so they can go live better yeah. and so i hope that i engage with things on screens um, in a way that make me actually want to turn it off. And so mm-hmm. I'd say for your practical and your family, if you're doing this for kids, give them things that make them want to turn the movie off mm. and go live the things yeah. that they see. Um, I know that's hard. And also just practically, if you want some really practical stuff, my mom always had a rule that we could watch as much TV or play as much video games as we did read. And that was really hard for an ADHD. <laughs> um, so she, she let me listen to books on tape. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I'd say that's a great practical tool. Sure. Make sure that there's balance in your life. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you want to watch a movie and play video games, do it. Just say, okay, before I'm going to do that, I'm going to read for an hour before I watch for an hour. You know, something right. yeah. like that. I don't know. That Reward be- yourself. Exactly. And I think another important thing is like, as you learn to engage with the screen, develop a habit within yourself and teach your kids this habit as well of learning how to engage your, oh. yourself and others as a part of it. Because like, mm-hmm. like you were touching on, Nathan, a part, an important thing to do to be intentional is ask yourself questions as you watch this thing. It's like, why am I watching this thing? 
Yeah. And what do I get out of it when I watch it? Does it make, do I just get the, am I inspired just to sit down and watch more of it? Which is itself is inherently bad, but if all the media you're consuming is just inspiring you just to sit there and watch more of it, maybe find more things that actually inspire you to like you're, hmm. to like you're saying, Nathan, maybe watch more things to inspire you to turn it off and go do things. And like, yeah, and, and teach your kids like have those same sort of questions about themselves as well. And they may not be super deep about it because they're kids, but like you can start t- t- uh, developing those habits within them when like you, you see them watching something, ask them about the thing they're watching or the thing they're enjoying. Ask them why they like it. Ask them what they get out of it. Ask them what this thing teaches them. And then they'll start developing those questions with them themselves as they get older. Yes. And yeah, as they engage them, the, themselves, they'll be engaging the screens better. I might add to that real quick. Um, that was a great thought because I think what we haven't brought up is I think a lot of the the detrimental effects of screens is it's a solo isolated act. Right. And I think one thing you can do to engage with screens healthfully is share it with others. You know, yes. every yeah. every week after we finish a podcast when we're in New York, we watch a movie or play video games together. And yes. it, it brings things bonds, it builds friendships. So maybe it's not even just getting rid of screens, but how can I involve watching, having screens that's in excellent. a way that's communal and yeah. a way that's actually sharing uh, this experience with others? Go see a movie, mm-hmm. watch a movie, talk about the movie, play video games, laugh together. So yeah. maybe make it, try to find ways that the screen is an isolating event, but actually a communal one. That's, that's excellent. I would say, so you guys brought up a lot of really good points. One of the things that for Bart's article, I, I, I brought up at the beginning, it talks about the fact is that, you know, as a, as for, as for parents, like, you know, the, your, the kids actually will model the behave, behavior of the parents towards screens. And so, monkey you know, see, if, monkey do. Yeah. Yep. So if so if you are engaging with screens in a healthy way, in a way that is not, you know, replacing relationships, but is actually, you know, facilitating relationships, it is not all the time, it's you know, some of the time, that is something that will actually encourage them as well to do that. And again, what you said, uh, Nathan, about sort of creating that culture of um of 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 using of screens with other people. Again, so one of my, I've told this before, some of my favorite memories are the fact that my family and I would watch movies together and then we would discuss the movies we watched at the dinner table. And so, you know, we would, again, we didn't have cell phones at the time, but again, a dinner table was a place where it's not that we couldn't use cell phones or we couldn't read at the dinner table. It was a place where we wanted to positively engage with the uh, material we were had, which was just having great discussions with each other um, about what we had watched the night before or something like that. So I say that, you know, that those are like ways to think about having a vision for ways screens to be positively, but also don't replace the human interaction. Where it's like, yes, you talk, watch the movie and you talk about it afterwards. You watch it together, you talk about it. You and you model that for the people that you care about. So I would say, you know, a couple of the principles I talk about, we sort of touched a little bit about this is experimentation. Like, again, you uh, you uh, talked with this, Nathan, that, you know, not everything is going to work for everybody, but there's a lot of people out there who are trying different things. And so, you know, you can, again, like you can read up on what the tech CEOs are doing to try to like, you know, to regulate their own or their family's behavior. You can look at it and see, try something that they do, see if it works. Like, you know, Nathan's like, hey, you know, the mom said you had to read the same amount of time that you watched something. Try that. See if it works. You know, um, you know, for Find your, your son- rhythm. I'll add one more. And it's what I'm trying to do now is outside of work on screens. I try to live at least as much life. Yeah in real life with no screens as I do on screens. I know yeah. that sounds like not even a high bar, but th- there's at least as much uh, life spent looking in someone's eyes, walking around, yeah. talking as I do playing a video game um, or whatever else outside of work, if right. that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a good practical thing for me. Yeah, so I think it's, I would say like, find those practical things that other people have suggested for, you know, for, and see which ones work for you. Uh, yeah. That's that, and see what work for you, work for your family. Um, I think that, yeah, I think that that's just getting to that, um, uh, idea of, is it something that's facilitating, you know, beauty and Mm. growth and connection with others and connection with God connection with, 
yourself or is it something that is substituting for other better things and trying, you know, if you're, if it's just you, if it's just yourself, this was going to say, again, make a list of all the things. Oh, this is the other thing is you can't just nature abhors a vacuum. Cause you can't, so you can't just say, I'm going to cut out screens. The reason you're cutting out screens is because screens might be replacing something better. So I would say, make a list of all the things that are non-screen related that you would like to do that would add to your life. Um, that you can try out doing and engaging with. Because if you actually find things that you love that are outside of it, if you actually have friends you want to engage with, if you actually, you know, learn to dance, you know, like whatever it is, it's mm-hmm. like, those are things, then those are things that, um, uh, then of course you won't be reading the screens because you're doing something better. And that's really, the end of the day, the only reason that screens are a problem is they might be taking away from you for something better. And so that's find fine something those things. that actually you don't even want to get on a screen. Exactly. Yes. So, are you taking dancing lessons? Is this you telling us that you are now a dancer? Joseph. 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 This is me saying that I have for years said I wanted to take dance lessons and never have because I spent too much time on screens. And eventually, <laughs> I will ad- take a ballroom dancing class, guys. I, I would one hundred percent do that. I think it's time. <laughs> it's time. Uh, let me get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> and by get back to you on that, he's not get back to you on that. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So basically, I- just find the things that you can get, engage with. So let's all go out there and get engaged. You may kiss the bride. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Go on, engage and dance. I, I agree. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. Come on yes. Let's go find the town of Footloose. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I think that that's that's about sums it up. Cool. So, all right. Well, now let's move on to everybody, and by everybody, I mean somebody's favorite segment. Mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Blesses and curses. Uh, so. Uh, Woo. N- yeah. So, yeah. Like, Nathan, would you add that applause in the background? Yes. Yeah. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. Just listen to that crowd. Yay. Um, so, Nathan A., w- what is uh, something, a piece of art that may or may not have to do with screens that you want to recommend and bless or not recommend or curse for this week? The Netflix movie, The Mitchells versus the Machines. Yes. yes. It is such a fun movie about, a, it's like, it's like kind of the Goofy movie meets Terminator. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new age Goofy movie. Absolutely. It, it really is. Where it's just like a family, specifically a daughter going off to college, trying to like reconnect with her dad. And they had this whole tension in their relationship over the fact that she is all about screens. She's all about technology and phones and like making friends, friends and connections through technology while the dad is very much an old fashioned homemaker that's like li- used to living in the woods and like making a name for himself just with his own two hands and the tension that comes from that. And what I really appreciate about this movie is how nuanced it is when it comes to like yeah. dealing with that, which is ironic because it's not a subtle movie at all. It's very, goofy, <laughs> very cheesy, but like they take a very honest look when it comes to technology and its place in our lives because if there is any other kind of story especially like say a random cartoon episode in the 90s the default will be like oh technology is bad we should get rid of technology these old folks are right we need to like be more present in the moment and like do things with our hands blah 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 and it's not that that's not true but at the same time the great thing about this movie mitchell's versus the machines is that acknowledges that there is plenty of good to be had with technology as well and the problem isn't so much that technology is getting in the way of our connections they make they pretty much make the point that that no, it's not technology is the problem, it's that humans are the problem. We will use anything as an excuse to get in the way of ourselves or get in the way of making connections with other people. Mm-hmm. And like they kind of basically say, even if technology wasn't around, we would find some means to like, again, try to isolate ourselves or like use an excuse to like cut our connections short because we know how hard it is to make connections sometimes. We know how hard life can be sometimes. And so we just want to turn our brain off and check out. We just want to turn our brain off mm-hmm. and cut off connections. But and we will, and we might use technology, or we might not. But we'll try to use anything at our disposal, and that's that's what this movie does a great uh, point of making. But even though all, all of that is very hard, it's very much worth doing. And technology or anything else can be a very useful tool and helps in terms of maintaining those connections, as opposed to cutting those connections short. 
I agree, and I'll and I'll second the motion to bless this movie. And by the way, this is a perfect example of how to engage with screens yep. in a communal way. We all watched this movie yep. after a podcast together, and we have raved over it since because it's yeah. just so fun. By the way, it's an animated movie, and the way they use animation is mm -hmm. amazing yes. and fun and creative. And mm -hmm. I love the family. I love the characters. I highly uh, second yeah. emotion to bless this if, if if you're a parent or a family and like you're looking for something to watch and you have netflix like this is a great movie you should watch yeah, together as a family and i know i agree i sec i'm gonna second both of your things uh nathan one um i i really one of the things about the animation it, it's so cool i guess as somebody who isn't even like the biggest animation nerd but like does appreciate animation i love the fact that you multiple animation styles in it they blend together they have the 3d mm -hmm. animation and then they use 2d animation to kind of use effects for the 3d animation so there's a lot that's great there for at an artistic level but as you so said like if you're someone that enjoyed into the spider-verse or itch animation yeah. you will enjoy oh, this yeah. animation yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's similarly trying to do something new and different with animation innovate yeah yes but as you said uh nathan a um you know one of the things i love about it is at the beginning of it people you're using technology to you know to kind of separate each other but at the end of course i mean you know i suppose they actually using technology over zoom to stay connected so they you yeah, show yeah. the whole thing about it's about how you use technology they also like again the whole trend of people using people as disposable and treating yeah. people as disposable and treating technology as disposable and mm -hmm. just okay how can i find communities and and um what was it um because one of the things we haven't touched on that people use technology for is to highly specifies like okay i'm gonna tailor the community toward my present needs and wants and desires and so it's like okay and so i'm gonna treat my family as disposable to what i was born into but i'm gonna find a community that's it's mm. everyone's just like me you know it's like you know so she because she's like oh i want to find people everybody who likes movies just as much as me and i'm going to find and that's which is fine but she treats the others as disposable and mm. so the idea of saying like okay it actually says this is not bad technology is not bad what's bad is treating relationships as disposable exactly uh, exactly and so again there's so much nuance and great in there um about how people use technology badly or well so yes if you want this that's a perfect thing to engage with the fact that we were all actually kind of frustrated that nathan a uh thought of that one uh, if before us, because that's ah! that's really the perfect one for this episode. Um, any others? Any curses? Um, no, I got nothing. All right, cool. You're just too positive. It's wonderful. I um, have a good curse. Don't worry. Cool, I have a cool. great curse. Um, do you want to do yours next? Sure, I'll go quick. Um, I'll say one of my, my blessed will be um, uh, Minecraft, the game, the oh, video yeah. game. Yeah. I didn't grow up on this, and I really wish I had because <laughs> yeah. I have seen this. And this is a perfect example of how screens can be educational. Yeah. Uh, not in this video, but screens can be educational, how they can build your mind, your imagination, and yeah. build community. There's people from around the world building these amazing, go on YouTube, look at some of the stuff they have built yeah. in mm -hmm. this really mm -hmm. creatively based game. So if you have kids, um, obviously, you know, come up with a good, good amount of time. You know, they need to have good balance, but Minecraft is a great, place on a screen if they're going to sit in front of a screen to exist it is creative yeah. it is amazing it's basically if anyone doesn't know what this is it's a world in which you build things you build worlds yeah and you're a character who can explore these worlds and meet other people in these worlds and it's so creative it's so conducive towards imagination and education uh so my, my bless is minecraft and i lament not having grown up with this because i would have loved it it's basically legos uh for a yeah. new age uh, mm -hmm. And Legos that'll let you interact with people from yeah. around the world. Yeah, it's just yep. yep. Legos. Yep. My curse is the. I know a lot of parents and people will be mad at me. Is the social dilemma? Yeah. Uh, this was a documentary basically about the subject we're talking about today on Netflix. It had some good things. It's basically about um, the the technology industry's tendency towards pushing addiction uh, yeah. in the algorithms and such in in social media and uh, their programs and basically the dangers of. Um, uh, the, the dangers of technology and screens, essentially. Sure, yeah. I, I do think there are real dangers. I do think that moderation is needed. My problem is their conclusion kind of came to this, which is um, 
yes, uh, too much screens is dangerous. Yes, tech companies try to make these things addictive and hit those dopamine um, things. And the only answer to this is to for government to come in <laughs> yeah. and um, stop you from looking at screens. Yeah. As opposed to, I'm a big free will guy. I'm a big, a big yeah. own yourself, own your life, own your choices guy. I agree with the with the um, assertion that screens can be dangerous and overused uh, for kids and stuff. But also, I also think that you both you yourself should learn how to self-govern yourself yeah. enough to know when to turn off the screen, how to implement healthy habits. And also, if you're a parent, you shouldn't need the government to tell your kids to turn off a screen or go outside or to uh, have find a balanced life with screens. You should be the one implementing this in your yeah. kids' <clears throat> life. And mm. so I agree with the assertion of the danger of screens. What I don't agree is the um, what, what they thought the answer to that was, which yeah. is what, what we really need is the government to come and tell us to stop using screens because we're just helpless, mindless drones. Right. We yeah. will have to. <laughs> Uh, keep on scrolling through TikTok until someone right. basically pulls our phone out of our hand. Yeah, pe- people are more capable of actually that kind of self-regulation than um, people often give credit for. And like we said, the amount of time one spends on screens is not a one-size-fits-all thing, you mm, know. Yes. And and so you know you need to be able to develop that kind of personal responsibility, and and people have to be allowed to do that in order for people to actually get the right benefits out of the screen time versus not screen time. So yeah, well, I, if I, you I, tell people that, well, you're going to do this no matter what, you have yeah, no choice. You're exactly. Just drone, and that you really need someone else to do this for you. Then they're never going to own those habits yeah, and, and build exactly. that of self-control, um, which I'm, I'm such a big fan of is, you know, no, that's, crazy, that's, that's a complete, yeah. completely, I agree. I mean, again, like, you know, I, as someone who, you know, um, had, you know, a, what parent, a grandparent who had, had dementia, you know, my, one of the things that found, and as somebody who's works, you know, right now in uh, places with developmental challenges, um, the more you treat people as if they are capable of mm-hmm. running their own lives and making their own choices, the more capable of those things they are. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, Amen. So, yeah. So those, those are my blessings and curses. Cool. That's great. Um, I'm going to do a bless. And actually, I'll say, tell people, I have for the first time recently watched the M. Night Shyamalan film, The Village. Ah. Yes. So I had roommate movie night. What a twist. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. watched The Village. And one of the things I thought that was that, I mean, it was a very well done film with um, that. It was well done film that really did a good job of setting up its twists so that it earned them. Uh, which is it's just such a great amount of storytelling. I, I at, at you know I was like, oh my gosh, they set that up. They set that up at the beginning. They set that up right at the beginning. So it's it's really and any characters you care about, atmosphere that's really good. So it was really a brilliant film. It makes me wonder how M Night Shyamalan fell so far. But hey, I liked old. <laughs> you know, that's because you are I, old. <laughs> hey, old. I don't care. My lawn. I, don't, I don't care how much you liked old. The difference in 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 technical skill and artistic skill uh, agreed is is just is difficult to fathom you might say his career is the greatest plot twist of all oh. Oh, <laughs> anyway i was trying to compliment the man anyway um the, <laughs> the vil was brilliant so it's that about of that and the characters but what it really does really well is show the futility of attempting to make um solve the problems of humanity by removing oneself from culture and society mm. it's like the all all sort of and people are getting mad at me for saying this benedict option you know decision <laughs> are doomed Rod to Dreyer, failure. come on the exactly podcast. exactly roger please come down the podcast and tell us why i'm wrong um but the tell the, me why the is because the problems of humanity don't come from technology or from the culture outside it comes from within us like you know mm. we're, we we yep. uh, we have that and so it you can say okay we're going to separate ourselves from this or that and and for whatever reason and and it can be possible sometimes to a limited degree but it's not going to solve the problem because the problem still is you're not going to have to get away from the fact we still have to regulate ourselves it's yeah. still however we regulate other people out there it's not going to keep us from having to regulate ourselves i think that, that the that i knew you'd like it yeah. Newsflash, we all still suck. You yeah, suck. Exactly. You suck. Yeah. I suck. <laughs> and um, I'm going to pull a Nathan A as I don't have a curse. I, I can't think of a curse. Woo! 
I so. think my curse was perfect because it so fits this. Uh, we'll yeah. just use that for everyone's curse. It's the blanket curse. Uh, yes. It's the blanket curse. <laughs> All right. Well, this is an awesome podcast. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's so good to be back on the three screens, like, a, you know, like a smaller, the Brady Bunch. Uh, just yeah. like old times. Exactly. And that's just how we started out. It's just all three of us on the screens. Uh, that's the thing is, our, our podcast started out is all on screens when during a pandemic True. when we couldn't be with each other. But it know? caused us to want to be with each other. Exactly. Exactly. It but fortunately, this is a podcast, so you don't actually have to see us on screen. So you're, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. Don't laughs> they saw us on screens, so they probably weren't listening anymore. We didn't put on makeup, so you're welcome. Exactly. Yes. Um, but yeah, so anyway, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you for joining just this podcast journey with us uh, in general. And thank you for joining us today. So uh, if people want to, because technology is good for building and getting more relationships uh if people want to reach out to you guys how can they do that uh nathan a share, how can people find you on the group i suppose that, that's <laughs> true. wow that's the most practical answer we've ever gotten yes <laughs> usually nathan so, a is like don't find me i'll find you but yes <laughs> so that'll, be, that'll be a quick plug for the group if you do want to spend more time on screens but in a healthy way head to the overthinkers facebook group we would love to have you it's so much fun memes articles discussions quotes we want you there and nathan a is there you'll be hard <laughs> to find him but you will find him <laughs> yeah, exactly uh, i will not make it easy for you no <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you want to find me, you can go to NathanClarkson.me or find me on any of the social media. Uh, just search my name, Nathan Clarkson. Joseph? You can find me on josephholmstudios.com. You can find me on the Overthinkers Journal contact page. You can find me on any of the socials. And of course, I also, I lurk and post on the uh, Overthinkers Facebook page. So check it out there. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Nathan A. Thank you very much, Nathan One, for being here. And thank you very much for listening. And, and thank you, Elderby. Yes, yes praise, praise Elderby. Elderby. <laughs> uh, we're going to get so many emails about that. Uh, and we more the emails we've got now. <laughs> <laughs> People send us emails all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> and remember, everyone, if it's worth thinking about, it's worth overthinking about, even on screens. That's all, folks. <laughs> yeah.